In this video, we will prove that finite hypothesis classes are pack learnable. Let's define the setting before stating the theorem. We assume that there is a set X of features, a set L of labels, a probability distribution D over the set X of features, and an underlying real prediction function F from the set of features to the set of labels. We also assume that we have a whole set H of prediction functions to investigate and that F belongs to the set H, which we shall also call the hypothesis class. Finally, we assume that we are given a random sample set of data x1, f of x1, f2, x2, f of x2, and so on until xn, f of xn. So this sample set has size n, and the x size are drawn iid from distribution d. Here's the interesting theorem we shall prove in this video. Every finite hypothesis class H is pack learnable. Stated differently, this theorem says that there exists a pack learning machine learning algorithm such that for any prediction function f of h and any probability distribution d over the set of features x, for any epsilon and delta are positive and any sample size n greater or equal to the logarithm of the cardinal of h divided by delta and all of it divided by epsilon, with probability at least 1 minus delta for sample sets Sn of size n, the prediction function computed by the machine learning algorithm with sample set Sn is epsilon approximately correct, that is, the probability that the machine learning algorithm applied to the sample set Sn and to the feature x is predicting the right label f of x for a random feature x drawn from probability distribution d. The probability that this prediction is the right prediction is at least 1 minus epsilon. Note that the size of the set x of features does not appear in this theorem. We might as well be looking at infinite dimensional space of features this does not matter. What does matter is the cardinality of the set H of hypotheses. You might be afraid that this set of hypotheses, even when it is finite, might be too big to allow for any kind of learning. But in fact, since prediction functions are the outputs of our machine learning algorithm, they should be identifiable by a reasonable amount of bits. Well, log of the cardinal of H the term that appears in the lower bound of the required sample size is proportional to this number of bits and would therefore be reasonably small as well. I hope that this convinces you of the relevance of the theorem in practice. One last remark that I should add is that this theorem does not prevent infinite hypothesis classes from being pack learnable. In fact, there are infinite hypothesis classes that are pack learnable. The right concept for pack learnability is actually the concept of the VC dimension, which I will mention, but in a future video. Let's now prove the theorem. The machine learning algorithm needn't actually be some complicated algorithm. It might just be a memory of algorithm that only spit out predictions for features that it has observed in the sample set. And it could just say, I don't know, for other features. However, we shall not consider this machine learning algorithm for the sake of exposition. We will merely assume that the machine learning algorithm picks any prediction function of the set H that is consistent with the sample set. Crucially, the sample set will likely cover the most likely features that the machine learning algorithm will be judged on. In fact, the way we shall prove the theorem is by upper bounding the probability that the sample set does not cover enough of the space of features. This means that we shall begin with the following lemma. If y is a subset of x of probability greater than epsilon, then it will be unlikely that Sn does not intersect y, that Sn doesn't pick one of the elements of y. So formally, this means that the probability when I draw x from the distribution d that x is in y, the fact that this probability is greater than epsilon implies that the probability when I draw a sample set, that the sample set does not intersect y, the probability of that will necessarily be at most e to the minus n epsilon. This corresponds to a simple computation combined with a well-known inequality. Namely, using the IID assumption, we see that the probability that the sample set 
does not intersect y is equal to the probability that every element xi drawn from the distribution d is not within the set y. And by independence of the data of the sample, we know that this is equal to the product of the probabilities that the xi do not belong to y. And this is, at most, because of our assumption, 1 minus epsilon to the power of n. And now we're going to use the classical inequality, 1 minus epsilon is smaller than e to the minus epsilon, which can be visualized graphically in this figure and be proved formally using a convexity argument. This yields the upper bound e to the minus epsilon to the power n, which is equal to e to the minus n epsilon. Let's now go back to the theorem. The trick now is to take a huge union bound over all bad hypotheses, that is, hypotheses that are not epsilon approximately correct with respect to the real underlying prediction function f. By definition of approximate correctness, any such hypothesis is associated to a disagreement set with f equal to y of h, which has probability greater than epsilon. Applying the lemma of y of h tells us that the probability that a bad hypothesis h is not rejected is at most e to the power minus n epsilon. We now take the union bounds over all non-rejection of bad hypotheses. This leads us to the conclusion that the probability that some bad hypothesis is not rejected is at most e to the power minus n epsilon times the number of such bad hypothesis. And the number of such bad hypothesis is clearly propounded by the number of hypotheses we started with. This gives us a right-hand side equal to the cardinal of h times e to the minus n epsilon. And now we're going to use our assumption on n, the fact that it is larger than the logarithm of the cardinal of h divided by delta and all of it divided by epsilon. And we obtain exactly a right-hand side that is delta. And now to conclude, we just need to negate it all. We obtain that the probability that all bad hypotheses are rejected is at least 1 minus delta. And this means that with probability at least 1 minus delta, we're going to pick a hypothesis that is not bad, that is a hypothesis that is epsilon approximately correct. We have the exact definition of pack learning, QED.